the Boston Celtics have been overwhelmingly good and they have tracked along the path that winners tend to track where you suffer the pain in youth of you're blocked at the rim by Adebayo to end one season. You get to the finals, uh, you get a lead in the finals, and then the Golden State Warriors, a dynastic champion, take you out. You've suffered the pain, and now the Celtics look so good that Brogdon is saying he's never been on a team like this, that it is a treat to get to play basketball this way, to know running out on the court, unlike how we just finished the last segment saying Durant <laughs> runs out on the court, looks around and says, oh, I'm going to break everybody's heart here because we're not good enough. The knowledge that you're great, not that you think you're great, but that you know it, and that you're playing with people who know it, basketball yes. becomes, and sports becomes, so fun and easy at that point. They are tracking offensively to be overwhelmingly unstoppable. And they're it's because they've allowed their young players to continue to get better and suffer the pain and grow through the youth. They are averaging 121 points per game. That's insane. I mean, if you look at recent NBA history, like, I mean, if you go back to, like, what's sort of the, the, the version of the Warriors that you think is sort of like, I mean, I, I think of the 2014-15 team when they first take a step forward. Their offensive rating that year was 110. The Boston Celtics offensive rating this year is 121. Like, it's it's insane how, like, that number pops off the screen. Like, if you're sort of like, I, I sort of know what good numbers look like on the NBA.com slash stats page, and those numbers are ludicrous. They're, they're, they're ludicrously good. Billy is laughing at you because you dare to get informed with numbers. No, because he, he cited the NBA.com slash stats page. <laughs> yeah. I live there. Thanks That's for like, the URL, bro. Yeah, do you just type in direct URLs for all of these places I, you I go just, to? I just know, like, that one in particular... Like, I, I know NBA.com slash stats, the traditional stats page, and then you start sort of doing filters and stuff. But, I mean, a 121 offensive rating is crazy. Like, I cannot, like, I, I'm going to go back and find, like, the 2012 Miami Heat, often cited well, as, as one of the most but, impressive but teams. But before you, before you cite them, what I wanted to point out is LeBron James had to come back from the pain of everyone seeing in the finals. J.J. Barea, you're afraid to post up. He had to go into hibernation hiding. I think he described himself as Tom Hanks from Castaway, where he grows the giant beard and is just stewing in his own suffering because he's uh, everyone on the stage has seen, look, there's a weakness in your game. The Celtics got undone the last three games of the season, that close to the championship, because we were all watching and we're like, hey, you guys can't dribble. You guys turn the ball over too much. You got to protect the ball better than that. Your two main guys can't dribble. The pain of that brings them back, Stugatz, doing whatever it is that these guys do in the offseason and the numbers that he's talking about. To be better than than LeBron James was when he was shooting damn near 60%, he had Shaq's field goal percentage because all he was doing was taking the most efficient shots and making everything. The 2012-13 Miami Heat had an offensive rating of 111. Again, the Boston Celtics' current offensive rating is 121. They're 10 points better offensively per 100 possessions than that team was. And this, I mean, the, the Ime Odoka situation had the chance to completely derail them. That happens right before the season. People cited Udoka as the reason why they took a step forward last year. <laughs> coaching. <laughs> but I mean, I, I mean, you have to give who is the Celtics coach? <laughs> Joe Missoula. You have to you have to give him a lot of credit for you? like not. I mean, for not letting the thing derail. <laughs> Udoka. <laughs> Udoka. <laughs> Wow, they both, uh, both Jessica and Billy shook their heads. What? Sadly, at Ujoka. Jarringly bad. Coaching means so little in that sport. I am sorry. Like, someone was going to win with Michael Jordan. It happened to be Phil Jackson. But eventually, someone was going to win championships with that guy. And someone is eventually going to win championships with Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Al Horford. I mean, that's just the way it is. <laughs> but, so guys, we just talked about an arc of them getting better. They actually, halfway through last season, were a bad team. 
or like a, at least a bang average team. No, they had a team meeting. They were nine and eight. They started. They had an important team meeting. It looked like they'd been done by undone by the Adebayo block at the rim and the second half of the season. I'm telling you, they were the best team in basketball. I thought they were going to win the championship. They're better than the Suns. They're better than Golden State, and they're even better. They're a good deal better than that this season, Stu guys. Yes. When Brogdon is saying out loud, I've just never been on a team like this. What a treat it is for an NBA player, he's saying, to be on a team like this. It's one of those teams, Dan, where we were growing up where they went through the pains, right? They went to the they went to the playoffs, they got to the finals, they lost in the finals, and it seems like they learned from that and this is their year. Like this is the it seems like that. I'm not saying they're going to win the title. That depends on the health of Al Horford, but uh it seems like this could be I mean, their year. Milwaukee yeah. is also Exceptional. They're very good. And yes. Phoenix is surprisingly gone again because they didn't they didn't add a ton. They had the Aiton thing kind of go completely wrong in the offseason. They, they lost thought, game seven in a way at home that yeah. was stupefying by fifty points. Yeah, the Robert Sarver situation, which was another sort of off the court thing that was meant to derail them, but they're the best team in the West again. They're the second best net rating team in the NBA again. I mean, They've yeah. had some young people pain as well. Like there's always some young people pain, Stugatz. On uh, I, I don't with very few exceptions, do you get a situation where a guy just gets there? first year a team that you think is good enough is all of a sudden the champion it it's almost always some suffering involved that force an embarrassment that forces these these guys to get better 